Diego, Samuel, and, and Mari. Oh, hi again. <clears throat> Let's see what where we left last time. So we have this creature now. And uh, I think that since last time I just made it blue and I also added a blue background. But um, today I plan to have it do something more interesting. So last time it was just uh, moving with respect to the mouse, but also with this um, physics. So you can see that some physics was implemented and uh, these creatures look a little bit freaky, so to speak. So today I want to introduce some kind of character, some kind of thing that these creatures are going to attack, and I'm going to <clears throat> implement this attacking happen. So I don't know how difficult this code is going to be, but uh, I plan to do it quite, quite quickly. I won't focus too much on the code. Uh, if you have questions, you can ask. But maybe we just try different things and make it so that it acts nicely. So I'm going to go back to the code here a little bit. And um, I was demonstrating using three of these monsters last time. And I'm going to just remove two of them. <clears throat> I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to remove two of them so that it's easier to, to work with. And uh, I don't want to have this kind of interaction with these creatures anymore with the mouse. I want them to actually start to move and uh, I want to interact with the player character. So I'm going to disable these, um, these codes here. Um, I don't think I need this mouse down to do almost anything anymore. Let's... Let's just empty this function here and mouse move. Maybe I'm going to need it to control the character. And then this unmouse up, um, still nothing here. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Sound of me screaming. Maybe let's, let's see sound effects later on, but now let's add the character. So. I'm going to add a penguin, like in today's um, video thumbnail. And this penguin, I think, is actually made by... Hmm. Okay, I don't remember if it was Samuel or Diego, but uh, it was Dark Cheese. Uh, who is Dark Cheese? I somehow have a fa fail to remember who is who right now. Sorry about that. But... Uh, yeah, <clears throat> so I have a penguin image. Okay, so Diego is dark cheese, great. I don't know why I don't remember, maybe it's just too many uh, nicknames and hard to, hard to remember, but I will definitely remember this time. So let's see Diego's penguin here. <clears throat> It's just a simple uh, PNG file. And uh, I think that I'm going to draw this uh, at the location of the mouse. So let's store the location of the mouse in this global variable and initialize it at uh, zero, zero, but uh, change the X and Y value on mouse move. So I'm going to say, the x of the mouse is going to be event.x and the y of the mouse is going to be event.y. And now we should have a function somewhere in animate for drawing the scene. So what I want to do is um, draw an image of this penguin on the, on the canvas. So I'm going to say context um, draw image, and it's going to be the penguin image uh, at the mouse location. So mouse X and mouse Y. All right. 
So let's just see if this works. No. Um, okay, I made the mistake here at the top. Uh, there shouldn't be a let here anymore because the variable is already defined. Okay. <clears throat> okay. I, I remember that only one of you made the sprites. I, for some reason, forgot which one, and I'm sorry. <laughs> I should remember these things. Uh, this penguin is actually following the mouse now, but it's very small. So let's make it a little bit bigger. Um, okay, let's control this also here with the variable and say maybe 100 pixels is, is enough. So um this penguin size is going to affect based on the penguin image i don't remember was it a square aspect ratio or was it somehow uh wider than it's it's high um i capitalized only global variables i don't think this is a common practice but uh i've seen some people do it and it makes it easier for me to remember if some variable is capitalized or um, if it's a global variable or if it's a, in a local scope like here. So these are definitely local variables. But if I accidentally see uh, one that is capitalized like this, I know that I'm immediately dealing with the global variable. Uh, because I'm writing okay-ish programming code. <laughs> this is not great programming code because um, I'm prototyping and trying different things, but I still have a decent structure here. And it's good that your variables have meaningful names. So I know you're probably making a joke that <laughs> most code is hard to read, but uh, yeah, it should be easy to read actually. Hello, Andre. So, are you eager to see some penguins getting devoured? Okay, let's see. What is the aspect ratio of this uh, penguin? It's basically going to be penguin image dot width divided by penguin image dot height. Mm. Just a second, I want to mark here the screen where I cannot exceed, otherwise you can't see my, my screen properly. And then based on this aspect ratio, I'm going to say that the width of the new penguin... Uh, <laughs> I will make it eat the penguin, Frank. Just be patient, please. Um, the width, the new width is going to be essentially penguin size, but uh, height is going to be width divided by the aspect ratio. Uh, I want to preserve the aspect ratio even if this is going to be a square image. I, I don't remember if it's square or not, but uh, best be ready for any kind of image sizes that are coming. Okay, and now this draw image uh, let's see what is happening. I'm getting an error. Um, there should be a comma here because this draw image method has now five arguments. It could have more, but I'm using the ones that are needed right now. Okay, and you can see now the penguin is bigger. It's more clear to see, um, but it's not centered where the mouse is. So to center it where, where the mouse is, I actually need to subtract from this location um, half its width and subtract from this location uh, half its height. And this is going to now center the penguin 
where my mouse is. And now this creature is really friendly at the moment, but we are going to make it aggressive soon enough. So let's, let's see what happens. Okay, this penguin is actually a bit blurry. I don't know if you can tell on the screen, but uh, it shouldn't be blurry. Um, it's pixel art, so Diego made this as a, as a pixel uh, art sprite. And I need to disable this uh, anti-aliasing. Mm. I don't remember how to do this, so I just have to <laughs> search. Okay, yeah, it's this um, part of code from here. So where I'm initializing my canvas, um, I have to tell it that I want image smoothing enabled set to false. And this is now going to affect how this penguin looks like. If you look at it now, it's, it's a bit blurry. But after I refresh, uh, now the edges are sharp. So you can actually see the individual pixels as Diego intended when he made the sprite. All right, great. So penguin is here, but there is no interaction from this, from this creature at all. Now, what I want to do next is basically make the creature move towards this penguin uh, somehow. And I'm going to have it move uh, with its head first. So somehow swimming with these tentacles behind him. I think it's going to look quite nice. Let's, let's see. And the first thing that we need to compute is to figure out where is the penguin uh, relative to this creature's uh, head location so that the creature starts moving in that direction. Let me see if I, I can make a small drawing of what I'm going to do next. Um, just a second, I'm going to try to share this new screen. <clears throat> All right. OK, so I'm now sharing paint and uh, I'm just going to say what I want to do. I want to figure out this uh, this vector right here. So basically, the direction start uh, starting the the vector starting at the center of the creature and going to the center of the penguin. I'm drawing it a little bit offset so that you can see here uh, black on black. Maybe different color is a good idea. Okay, so this vector is what I need to calculate. And this is actually calculated by subtracting um, the vector um, for this P1 here. From P2. So to get this, I actually need to do P2 minus P1, that's going to give me this, this vector. But if I move the creature with this vector, it's going to instantly teleport to that location. So I want it to actually move. Oh, you can't see me. Great. Um, now you can see me. <laughs> Great. Um, so this is going to give me this vector, but uh, it's going to be too long. I want to make it smaller so that this creature is going to move in, in smaller increments, not just instantly teleport where the penguin is. So to do that, I actually will normalize this vector. Let's try to get a different, different color here. And normalizing the vector means that you get it so that its length is equal to one. So now maybe the red arrow's length is, I don't know, maybe 300 pixels or something. But I want to get it to point in the same direction, but have a length equal to one. 
And after I have that, this normalizing, uh, normalizing uh, part of this, this vector done, uh, I can scale this resulting, um, this resulting arrow to move with any kind of speed that I want, basically. So it's kind of not needed necessarily to normalize. I could just scale it down. But if you normalize, then you can scale it up with whatever speed you want. So a little bit, a little bit uh, deeper discussion here about what is going to happen next. But it's actually quite simple. So let's see how we are going to do that. Okay, back to the code, and I think you can see me, and uh, I can see the code, right? So, uh, our monster has now here a creation part, so this is where the monster is being created. Uh, it has a central particle here, uh, which is the head, basically, and then many other particles and segments that are composing this this body there. Um, I want to move this first particle, and maybe it's actually good to identify this particle as the center of the monster is equal to this new particle from here, and then I just push it in this array to be affected by physics and all the other all the other code. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I, I, it seems like quite many comments that I'm, I'm missing here. Yeah, so this was inspired by Cthulhu, actually. Uh, Mari had a Cthulhu-related exercise in, in my course, in one of the exercises. So she, this is probably why she is here. And yeah, pixels are expensive. Okay, so... Um, when moving the monster here, I said that we have these particles moving just due to gravity and, and whatever other, other influences, but I want to move the center in the direction of the penguin. So let's calculate that vector uh, as the subtracting now from this whatever center uh, location of the monster and now the mouse location so subtracting those gives me that red arrow that i previously drawn then i'm going to uh, normalize this vector and say this and i can already test this let's let's try it out i'm going to say the center location is going to be uh, updated by adding to the center location the new normalized vector. So now it's moving just one pixel in the direction of the penguin per frame because the normalized value here is just a value, a length of one. Let's see if it works. Um, Okay, I I did something wrong, I think. Uh, it's basically running away from the penguin uh, at a very, very slow, slow speed. So I think that, hmm. So what is the problem here? Either my subtracting function. No, this is correct. Uh, Okay, uh, yeah, I made the mistake. This should be um, mouse minus minus the center location. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's the problem here. Okay, let's see. Uh, that bug. Uh, oops, not minus. We are dealing with, with point objects or, or vector objects. So this method accepts uh, two vectors here. I, I was making a mistake before. Okay, let's see. 
Okay. Yeah, I will make the tentacles wrap around the penguin. Just be patient. It's gonna take maybe half an hour, an hour, but it will happen. I, I want it to be cool. Just starting easy. So now it's just creep, creepy, in a creepy way, just moving towards this, this uh, penguin there. Let's make it faster. So I said that I want to, um, to speed it up, to scale this vector uh, upwards. So I mean, I mean higher, uh, to have a higher magnitude. And uh, I'm going to do that by saying scaled vector. So I'm going to scale it by um, maybe, maybe five. So now it's going to move five, five times faster because I'm moving it from the current location by adding a vector that is five units in length. Okay, you can see something happening here. Uh, a bit more, a bit more energy in this creature, and I kind of like the tentacles uh, moving like this. Uh, but I think it's a bit too much. This is because we have no dampening. There is no kind of friction in this system. So basically anything that is moving in one direction will continue to move in that one direction uh, unaffected. And that's why when they are extended to the full length, these start to behave like, uh, like this kind of, like you're spinning a, a rope um with a weight on on top around you and i think that they should actually be somehow slowing down faster because of the water resistance so this is something that i'm going to do in the um, particle class when we are moving them here um by this vector value from the old location to the current location we're adding this again to move to the new location but instead of adding it directly i'm going to dampen it dampen it just a little bit i'm going to say to scale it down by 0 0.98 usually uh, you don't need to go too much down from uh, from the current value because it will be repeated on every frame so let's see how it looks like now. Yeah, you can see that now the the legs are not not doing that kind of weird spinning spinning around motion. <laughs> and, uh, the head of the creature is actually now reaching the penguin, but then going on the other side of the penguin and then going back and forward and back and forward very, very quickly. Uh, from every frame, it kind of looks like it's trying to, to eat the penguin. I, I don't think it's something I want to have, but, uh, but it looks kind of funny now, at least. Yeah, but not today. Today I'm going to focus on this creature eating the penguin, and um, now it's moving kind of nice, but I want uh, what what Diego was saying, that uh, the tentacles are going to start to wrap around, uh, wrap around the penguin. To do that, I need to know <laughs> soon, not, not today, be patient. This is going to be a long project. Uh, and yeah, okay. So I want the tips of the tentacles to be marked somehow. At the moment, we don't know which of the particles are the tip of the tentacle and which not. I remind you that um, the particles are basically looking like this. So they are just individual points they are connected by the by the segments 
and one point is especially big this one that is uh, is drawn there as the head it's just a stylized effect but i want to mark now which of these uh, points are the tips of the of the legs because they are going to start to to grab onto the penguin somehow so let's see how we do that um in the monster class hello abed in this monster class uh i'm generating here the particles and i have here a number of segments that the creature has and a number of legs so 10 segments means that each leg has 10 particles in it and this is the distance between those particles so if you play with these values here you could get uh, different looking creatures like this one has shorter tentacles uh, this one has really long very very creepy tentacles that are somehow uh, being stopped now by the by the side of the screen but i think that previous value was just just nice uh, so the last particle in each segment needs to be marked somehow mm -hmm. yeah so if we are on the last particle in this segment so basically um is tip so the tip of the tentacle i'm going to check is it the tip or not uh, and it's going to be equal to i is equal to seg minus one so if we are on the last segment then we know that this is the tip and our particle class um, needs to be told some different uh, properties here. So if I go now to the particle class, you will see that it has some properties here, like is it static already, is it the head? So I say that for each of the tips, they are not static, they are not the head, and uh, this is tip, which defaults to false, is going to be actually set to true. So now the particles know if they are the tips or not. I could even draw these uh, differently to mark them down by, for example, saying here, just to make sure that what I'm coding here is implemented correctly, I'm gonna write a little bit of code that debugs this uh, and it's gonna draw them in red. So. They are red, they are also very hard to see. <laughs> Let's make the radius also a little bit bigger so that they are marked. Maybe we multiply it by, by four. Okay, so those are the tips, the particle tips that um, of the tentacles that are going to wrap around the penguin. Oh, so do you think that, well, that's one option. These could be flying creatures. I, I don't mind. Let's, let's consider it that way. I think anyway, the idea is to make something that looks cool and it doesn't need to make so much sense. <laughs> Penguins don't fly. Uh, <laughs> if you want it to make sense, so penguins will fly when they meet Santa. That's kind of the idea, but uh, before that, I don't know. Do we want these creatures to be on the ground or on the on the air? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I could, I could. Okay, so now dark cheese is here. Okay, too, way too many. Uh, <laughs> way too many names for the same people <laughs> but yeah i now definitely know who is who 
Okay, so these tips of the particles, they have been correctly identified, these tips of the tentacles, sorry, and they are going to now wrap around the penguin. So I'm going to actually uh, go to the monster, and when we are moving it here, where we, when we are updating it, I'm going to do the same thing that we are doing here to move the center, but I'm going to do it for every tip of the particles, every tip of the tentacles, sorry. So, uh, I'm going to... to go through the particles, and if it is a tip, then I'm going to do something to it. I'm basically going to do the same thing as here. I'm going to calculate a vector, not from the mouse, um, yeah, from the mouse location, but not to the center, to the particle, to this particle's location, then it's going to normalize it, it's going to scale it, and maybe the tentacles are going to move uh, faster than the head. Let's see if this makes sense. So I'm going to put here 8. So this the tentacles move faster than the head and uh, here the particles location is going to be moved not the center location so let's see what we get now okay uh well we are getting something <laughs> It's creepy. You can, you can make faces. Uh, please do. If you make a face, then maybe I'm even going to add it today. Uh, okay. I don't like this. It's, uh, it's like the creature is basically being fooled by the penguin. It's not something I, I like uh, at the moment. I think that um, the tentacles should only move when they are close enough to reach the penguin. So this is suit ink. Wow. Mm. That this is going to be a really tough creature I, uh, <laughs> to beat if it's going to shoot ink as well. Maybe if we make it the the final boss, then it can do that. But uh, I think that um, it's going to become just too too tough to beat this this thing. Let's see. Maybe uh, it's still on the on the list. It's a good idea. I don't know. <laughs> You can think what works with this kind of creature. Okay, I'm gonna remove this red emphasis on the tips of the tentacles and uh, make them move only when they approach, uh, when the creature approaches the penguin. So I still liked the previous movement here when the um, creature was moving uh, with its head first and the tentacles were, were somehow just behind it flowing in the in the water maybe it's using them to swim with it kind of looks nice but i want them to start uh, grabbing onto the penguin when it gets close enough so this code from here only um, only if this particle is close to to the mouse location. So if distance from this particle location to the mouse is less than, let's say, 300, then I'm going to make this uh, tentacle go towards the penguins, the penguins location. So well, let's see if it works.
Hmm. Yeah, that pace is good, I think. I think it kind of works. Okay, these are moving way too fast. Let's make it um, move slower. Okay, and actually this head of the creature is moving without friction and without uh, acceleration because the head of the creature was created uh, as a static particle. Um, yeah, if I'm going to remove the static attribute, so the reason why I wanted it static is that it, it pins on the screen and I can somehow see the gravity affecting the pentacles. Otherwise, this would just um, fall down uh, on the stage, basically. So, okay. If uh, I disable all that I did now for the creature to move towards the penguin, what happens now when I remove this static uh, value, static attribute for the head is that everything falls down. Basically, everything falls on the bottom of the screen. But now, because there is some kind of uh, acceleration, some kind of movement added to the head, uh, okay, this is going to be, okay, it tries to get up from the bottom of the screen and to reach the penguin, but gravity is pulling down on it with, uh, with a too strong force. So I could update this uh, vector that is pulling towards the penguin to be stronger. Let's, let's see. Okay, it's moving way too fast for this short screen, but I kind of like the movement. It, it starts to be yeah <laughs> okay and i don't like that it's fidgeting here very very much this is something that um i want the particles to basically attach to some to some location so once they are close enough to the final location it needs to snap into that place so that we stop getting this this fidgeting uh mode okay great you have a sprite i'm gonna check it in the next five minutes or so first i want to clean this up a little bit yeah okay maybe we hmm. I'm going to not need this emphasis on the tips of the, of the tentacles. I think they are a bit problematic. Yeah, now it, it looks kind of... Okay, why are those tentacles not... not coming close sometimes? Okay. I think it's okay. Yeah, kind of creepy. Uh, and I also want to put the creature... I want to put the creature on top uh, of the penguin. So basically, like that. I think it, it's probably going to look a little better. But maybe these tentacle parts of the creature should be, yeah, they should be behind the head. Now this doesn't make sense. So um, the monster needs to have here in the drawing function, I think we just need to put the segments before the particles, because the big head particle is then going to cover those those segments. Let's let's see. Yeah, this looks interesting. 
Okay, let's see. I'm gonna check this uh, this face sprite. Let's see where is it. Okay, I have something. Uh huh. So squid face squid face dot png is here, and I need to draw this on the monster. Um, actually on the particle that is a head so uh, we have here the is head attribute in the particles and in the is head i think this is where i want to draw it but on top of the arc so hmm. like this squid face so <laughs> Um, okay. All the things that um, all the things that we did with this penguin image here, this is bad code. It's something that you actually want control over um, and do multiple times. Like now, I'm drawing the squid face. I don't want again to find its aspect ratio. Uh, move it so that the center is not in the top left corner and, and so on. So I'm going to extract all of this code from here and make it um, make my own draw image function. And here I'm going to say draw image um, the penguin image at the location of the mouse Um, and with the given size, so something like that. And the draw image function is going to have a general uh, parameters here. So image, uh, size, and then location. So these are going to now replace these global variables here. And I just made my function much more useful. Uh, because now I can reuse it to draw the squid face um, at this location. But uh, because we translated here, now we are at zero, zero. So I can just put, um, okay, the size. Let's set a size of 100 for now, and the location is going to be 0, 0. Let's see. <laughs> okay, uh, actually, it doesn't look that bad, but it's hard to see. Uh, I think it needs to be a bit smaller here, like uh, 80 or maybe even 70. Could this squid face be made uh, white maybe? Or light blue even better, I think. Because it's it's not very visible now. And I think, it, yeah, I think light blue, white would be too strong contrast. Meanwhile, I'm gonna work on this fidgeting movement. So I want the tentacles and the head to attach on the penguin. So um, the particles need to know uh, if they are attached or not. So, okay, attached to something. So let's say attachment is equal to null. And um, in the move, if they are attached to some location, 
then they will be equal to that location. So if this attachment is not null, um, we are going to say that this location is equal to this attachment. And I also need to update old location to be this. So I don't want any any physics to, to affect this, um, which is going to happen if uh, I don't update both of these attributes there. And I can return this. There is not going to be any physics involved. If it's attached to something, it's going to move with that something. So yeah, so this attachment, um, I just need to set this attachment um, in the monster uh, update. So here in the monster update, um, if, yeah, if um, distance from mouse to this center location is less than, let's say, 10 pixels, <clears throat> 10 pixels, then the center um, is going to be attached to the mouse. And I'm going to do the exact same thing here um, with the particles. So the tip particles, um, if distance to the to the particle location is less than ten, then the particle is going to be attached to the mouse as well. I'm not sure if this will work as intended, but okay. <laughs> um... Well, it is attached. <laughs> I can't get it off the penguin anymore. Um... <laughs> okay, it's it's kind of interesting. Okay, new new recolored sprite available. Let's see. All right. Okay. Now we have the face there also. Uh, maybe I'm going to set this attachment to, to null if uh, the distance is further than, uh, than whatever this 10 is. So I need to definitely refactor this code but um, I could still clean it up a little bit and say what this distance means. Uh, let's see. Something like when to attach. And um, This 300 that uh, was used to move my, when the uh, tentacles start to move, uh, better to also re reset, um, have a name, name for this. Okay. And now the center, uh, center should also detach, I think, if this distance is, is farther. Uh, than when it should be attached. So I, I'm just thinking that now, if I move 
yeah, if I move the penguin really quickly, it's going to go go away from here. I mean, escape, basically escape from the creature. And now the creature is... Okay, the particles of the tips are in front of the face of the creature. This is something I don't like. Hey, can you make me uh, a happy face or, or some other face that the creature can have when the penguin is, uh, when it's attached to the penguin? I think it's somehow, uh, somehow needs to have a different face. Meanwhile, I'm going to put these small particles behind the big one. So yeah, in the draw function here, I'm going to just draw the particles in reverse because the first one is the big head that is going to cover all the other ones. So I'm going to start here from this, uh, the last one, and it's going to go to zero inclusive and then I minus minus. Okay. And I think I'm going to put this code somewhere so you guys can test it and tell me what you think about about this so i'm gonna yeah i think i'm gonna do this now and give you a link so let me see mm. just a second Yeah, okay, just a second. It's gonna take a little bit of time, but um, it's coming. I realized that I need to put also these images somewhere on the server. And I didn't prepare for this quite well. Okay, mm, so penguin and squid face. And I need to change. The URL a little bit. Okay, yeah. Link is coming up. You can try it out now in this in this link here.
So tell me what you think about the movement. Uh, is it good? Is it bad? Do you think we can work with this? I'm quite happy with it. Okay. So for you, the code doesn't appear or the application doesn't load properly. Yeah. As alive as it can be, <laughs> it's really, it's really angry tentacle creature here. <laughs> oh, okay. Hmm. Can you show me in Discord this um, uh, JavaScript bigger, make it as big as possible and, and show me that. And I'm going to look to see this new sprite here. Okay, happy sprite. Mm -hmm. So the happy sprite is here and I think where we are drawing the squid face, um, yeah, we just need to check if it's attached then it's going to be happy, otherwise it's going to be angry. <laughs> I think this is going to be funny. Uh, no, uh, attachment is not no. It, it, the attachment for the head is something. So let's see. Uh, now does it work? Okay, uh, I'm going to make my mouse uh, disappear. So the mouse now is kind of blocking this face and ruin, ruining it for me. I'm going to make the mouse uh, go away by putting the canvas um, cursor to none. Okay, uh, and yeah, I think I just need to do some small modification here. Uh, just a second. On this code, I want to use the links to where I uploaded these images now instead okay and now i can update this code also on code pen so you should be able to see it now on code pen uh, same link as before but also with this happy face yeah yeah it does feel like that i i wanted to go for something like this but i wasn't exactly sure uh how it's gonna look like in the end mm.
Yeah, I think this is really funny. <laughs> um, yeah. I also updated now the code pen to hide the cursor. I forgot to do that. Okay. Um Does it work now so for uh, Mr. Dark Cheese in code pen or sometimes it maybe saves a uh, old version and maybe it's not loading properly or maybe the browser cache has some issues. Try also hard reload with control F5. It could it could fix the problem. Really? So for you that page doesn't work. This is weird. Okay. I'm going to send a new link now. I'm going to send a new link now. So if this one also doesn't work, then I'm not sure what the problem is. Okay, now this penguin is not going to move like this. The penguin is going to move somehow more, um, less control over it. And I think that we are talking about making it walk on the land and then swim underwater. So I thought that this is going to be an underwater creature, but I think it could also be a, a flying creature. Why not? It kind of looks like the Dementors in, in Harry Potter, if you, if you know the characters. Um, okay, so the penguin is not going to be able to just teleport from one side of the screen and to the other, like mocking this creature in this way. But um, it's going to be harder, harder to avoid, I, I think. Um, and I don't know if the penguin should attack the creature in some way or just avoid it and that's going to be enough. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's kind of like a uh, like one of those dementors. Okay, so good that that one works. I don't know why the other doesn't. I think it's probably some weird settings, maybe something to do with your your browser. Uh Frank's seems to work just fine. But I really like this uh, this feel now I'm I'm getting so the creature really moves nicely and uh, it's quite happy when the penguin comes. This could be made into a very simple game uh, if we implement now a life lifespan for this uh, uh, not a lifespan a life bar for this penguin and then maybe when the creature is happy the life is going to slowly decrease so you basically need to um uh, <laughs> yeah that, that could be made into a very simple game but i think that not really that fun to play or difficult to play because you can just move this penguin to be uh far away from the creature and 
uh, it's it's gonna be safe so we need a little bit more uh thinking about the controls over this penguin now yeah it could be some code thing related issue i i don't know so do you still want to do something today or uh is this it what about next time I think this is really funny. Grinch defeated. Yeah, I'm gonna update that older prototype. Uh, I promise that I will do it. I will update it these next few days, but uh, I'm more interested about making these good components like this creature now that is gonna be uh, one of the main characters and I'm really happy with it. So yeah, something like this. Is gonna make make part of the game really interesting so i, I want to make these kind of components that are good and then reuse them uh in different levels or in, in different ways when making the full game yeah yes yes i remember i'm the voice let's see where is the Grinch, so oh, I don't have the link there. What about this penguin? So tell me more. How do you think we should move this penguin? Should it be moved using the mouse? Should it be moved using a keyboard? Um, I thought that it could have different kind of abilities like jumping, uh, swimming if it dives underwater. So how about you help me figure out this now and what do I do next time? I want to focus on this penguin uh, level and maybe it's going to be one or two levels i don't know should this creature be a final boss should it just be one of the enemies uh, generic enemies during the platformer style game let me know keyboard okay yeah do you think that could be a bad idea um I, I'm thinking uh, many people play games on the mobile nowadays. I actually like keyboard the most. I, I like playing games using the keyboard. Uh, but I don't know, should this be mobile game or just have it as a as a desktop as a desktop game? So if you don't know what I'm talking about, this is basically the game, uh, the prototype that we are making. And um, this is going to be one of the later levels. So we start the story with Santa losing his, <clears throat> magnificent, about food. his magnificent sled. And uh, then he will meet and the penguin and the reindeer are going to abandon him. And then one of these penguins sees the accident when Santa's, Santa crashes. And then the penguin, he goes to reach Santa. But uh, so basically the game will start with the penguins in the center of attention. And um, on the way to Santa, one of the things that the penguins will need to avoid are those creatures that we just made today. So I don't know, should that be a final boss? Should it be a normal 
generic character like these drones are here and those pizza slices um okay yeah okay so no mobile game <laughs> well i know that you guys have very good time on this game and much better than i can get so um i don't know the strategies i just know how it works well i'm not spoiling the story i'm, I'm kind of asking for ideas and giving some kind of a, a hint of what the contents are going to be so now focus is on these penguin levels they are going to reach santa and i think the penguins shouldn't be able to fly yet so i think these creatures should be underwater creatures and the penguin should basically just walk on the surface uh, jump over obstacles maybe fight some other same kind of sprite characters but then maybe it could avoid some characters by jumping underwater or some difficult um, parts but then underwater you have this kind of thing that is chasing you so um i don't know does this or maybe this when you start when you jump underwater then uh, this is like a boss fight. so this this character could be the the boss because it's it's somehow so cool compared to other kind of uh, um, characters, like just having sprites and uh, animations. I think it's they are cool, but this one has has maybe personality because of the way it moves and this kind of <laughs> um, a little bit of physics implemented into it. Oh. The octopus thing was too slow. You want it to be faster? Okay. Well, the speed of this creature is actually controlled by this and then the tentacles are also controlled by this let's make it um, something like this and now you can actually play with this speed from the monsters um, constructor so okay code pen doesn't doesn't work properly for you i think mm. code pen doesn't work for you properly but i'm gonna update it now anyway and um, if you can get it to work then go to the monster class so that search for class monster and if you change this speed value from 10 to let's say 20 then this creature is going to be much more uh much more aggressive so you can basically control the difficulty level of the game by giving it these uh a different speed for how the creature interacts and if you want for example this tentacle to move earlier you could also make it move earlier like maybe when it's 400 um, pixels away from the creature then these tentacles start to move so it also becomes even more aggressive so it you can really control very much the behavior of this uh, creature from all of these parameters here um, wow okay uh, this head doesn't attach anymore when you change some of the parameters so 
here this probably should be equal to the speed maybe yeah let's try to remove one parameter here okay no more weird effect going on yeah you can play with these parameters and let me know what you think they should be uh, set to by before next time and i will need some kind of animated sprites if we are going to make this penguin walk and um, control in this side scroller game i i think we can decide on keyboard so andre thinks it's a good idea um i don't want this to be a mobile game i think that we can have much more much more control and much more fancy things when we have more buttons to work with and a larger screen size so desktop game is it is and you can play also with these other parameters. So maybe changing here something like the number of legs of the creature. So you could have it uh, have 15 legs <laughs> if, if you want. I, I don't know how that affects, but. Uh... And you could make them way too short okay they are very short here it could also be that uh, changing these parameters could create different kind of um, different kind of enemies so this this shorter legged enemy could be more of a generic enemy but then the one with the longer legs could be uh, <laughs> could be the final boss and then maybe make him move faster and have more more features so this is a good good thing about working with different parameters here and of course they could be added here when creating a monster for example um, let's say we we add these parameters as arguments to this um, constructor like the number of segments no this uh, step size uh, between the particles so this one could be equal to 30 by default um, and then okay let's just revert this to the legs like that but also change the speed okay the speed is going to be um, by default 10 or we said 20 is a good idea uh, yeah so now when we are creating this monster here in the in the beginning I can actually create two monsters I can make another one that is a little bit to the right so maybe seven here but I can modify his properties from the default ones for example the step size could be 15 and then the speed could be okay could be 10 for example and now i'm gonna have an error uh, hmm. okay uh closing here the parenthesis in the wrong location so now i basically have two of these characters on on the screen and this bigger one is somehow more more aggressive than the smaller one i don't know where is the big one it's oh it's crazy crazy stuff going on here wow it's becoming difficult even with moving the the penguin with the mouse like this <laughs> okay yeah this is this is really funny now 
I think I'm gonna make this into a small game right now. Um, let's make the small creature actually have have it size vary um the head size be smaller as well i think it's too too funny with these two yeah let's see maybe for you it's gonna be easier i'm gonna make its size smaller so um hmm. it's a bit hard Ooh, ooh. Yeah, let's make it even slower a little bit so this pen is a bit too fast. Um, okay, this particle that is going to be the head here, I think I want to give it something like head size. Maybe, okay, uh, 70 pixels, but it should depend on this step size. So let's say step size multiplied by two, something, something like that for the particle. Uh, and then the particle this is head it's actually going to be head size and by default it's going to have this radius of two so now head size goes there and if the head size is equal to Hmm. 60 then okay no 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 um the radius is just going to be equal to to the head size yeah we we actually don't ah okay no this is bad name uh it's just radius so radius here and this is going to be like that we don't need this head size anymore and here we just say yeah we just say that we actually don't need this weird scaling to happen i think and here yeah if um this radius is more than two. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Uh, way too big head for the other one. So. Here I want the step size not to be doubled. Yeah, but to be increased by 10%. Okay, 20%. That looks good, but the face for the small head needs to be uh, proportional. So, yeah, so here when I'm drawing the image, this uh, hmm, radius should also be, be sent to this draw image function and multiplied by two because this is going to be size of that image great now we have the smaller creature having also a smaller head and a smaller face it looks kind of nice um i'm gonna make it into that game so let's do it really quickly and say here um hmm life is equal to a hundred percent and and 
if the head is attached, then life is going to get smaller. And um, hmm. yeah. And in the draw scene function, after I draw all these things, I'm going to say uh, fill text life and then the value of life um uh, let's see where this puts it okay i'm getting an error uh yeah so first the text then the location i think it needs to be specified mm -hmm. Okay, I was expecting to see it here in the top left corner, but um, but it's not not showing for some reason. Let's see. Uh, hmm. Any ideas? Yeah, I thought that, but it seems like no, it's not the same as the background. Okay, it may need it may need uh, to have some kind of um, font value defined otherwise i'm not sure otherwise maybe it doesn't have a default value no very weird Okay, so <laughs> it's in the center now, it's there. Uh, let's see if it works without the font defined. Yeah, but uh, I actually preferred the larger font here. Um, and I want it in the top left corner, so why is it not... Let's try it at uh, 10 pixels and 10 pixels. Okay, very weird. Um, okay, yeah, I think that the baseline of the text is it, at zero, 00, so the text was actually appearing above that. Yeah, okay. And I'll just make it dark blue. Okay. And maybe if the life is less than 10, then I'm going to make it dark red. Okay. Uh, it's, yeah. And now we can make the, hmm. yeah, okay, I will add to the internet, but let me add also a counter for the time. So every time we, we start the game, so let's say, like that, um,
yeah if um I'm gonna have the light showing there, but if it's game over, then it's just gonna show game over. So and hmm, and I want to print also this time this elapsed time so to do that I'm going to say fill text time um, and the value of time is going to be okay let's make it also global elapsed time and say here elapsed time is equal to current time minus um, minus minus start time so yeah but uh, this is only going to happen when our life is existing uh, otherwise it just keeps the previous value and um, yeah okay so we have a time here printing the elapsed time and I want to print this on the right side of the screen so take the width of the canvas and then minus some value from there maybe 100 okay maybe 150 hmm. so time is is increasing there but um okay and then game over this is in milliseconds, so this is going to be really uh, interesting to compete. Who can last as much as as much as possible here? Okay. Um, okay. Uh, and I want to be able to click and um, reset. So or nah too much so if you want to play again you just have to restart this page it's a bit i'm getting tired <laughs> so let me make this update to the web pages and um, so i'm gonna make the uh, i made already update in the previous link and i'm also gonna make this update in code pen I think yeah so both of them are actually there you can test if you want uh, and let me know what you think I think I'm pretty much done for today and it's uh, it was fun so yeah is it easy? Do you want more creatures? <laughs> uh, not the greatest game in the world, but I think it gives some kind of idea, like where should we go from this and how should the penguin move? So this is what needs work next. Uh, how are we going to move this, this penguin and control him? It's going to depend what parameters these monsters are going to get how fast they are what can they really do <laughs> okay
Okay. Uh -huh. You can't. <laughs> you want to kill them? <laughs> Maybe the penguins should be able to uh, shoot lasers <laughs> at the at the creatures. Yeah, this game over is also kind of a. Uh, hmm. Okay, let's disable the game from uh, happening. So in the animate function here, if life is uh, greater than zero, then we have this call to request animation frame. Otherwise, yeah, so now you just see the end screen here without any more character movement or, or okay, I don't like this because I would still like to see the creatures moving. Let me uh, disable this and just say that my mm, the mouse move here is not going to affect the value if uh, the life is not existing. So, so now basically after the character dies, then I can't move him anymore, but those creatures are somehow still, still there. Okay, why are the creatures not moving? Um, ah, okay, yeah, because I dampened the motion um, means that here when we are updating the particles, so in the particle movement here, we do have some random um, change. But because of the dampening, I think that now the tentacles just stabilize there. So maybe increasing this value a little bit. Mm. No, they they still stop like that. Oh, they stop. I don't know what's happening. I think it's a I think it's some kind of weird bug. I would expect to see these do something here if they are not attached. So yeah okay i think that's it for today so let's see next time what happens i'm not entirely sure what we're gonna do but we have something now so curious what is the maximum time that you're gonna reach here uh, i guess it's not too difficult to avoid these for for even forever depends on the size of your screen and uh, yeah. All right. So I think that's it for today. So see you next time.